Hey guys, it's Angie Bell with My Fairy Treasures. Okay, you guys, I thought today I would just share some of my um, spinning on my spinning wheel. I uh, like to spin art yarn, and I call it mixed media knitting, and I'll explain that to you in a second. Um, I went ahead, I'm going to start doing some of these um, art yarn spinning videos, because I've had a lot of people ask me, are you still spinning yarn, and do you still knit? Oh yeah, I do. Um, I just haven't done videos on it lately. Um, so I wanted to show you guys some art yarn that I did. Now, if you see any red, that does not, that is just, um, some yarn I used to tie my, um, to tie my whole, um, what do you call this? Weft of yarn together. There's a word. It's not hitting me. Anyway, but I just want to show you, this is some art yarn that I did and I like to call it mixed media, mixed media, mixed media spinning and creating art yarn. So um, I use uh, wool, I use a ton of, I use, this is why I call it mixed media uh, spinning. I use wool, and that's what this stuff is in between, okay? I use uh, sheep's locks, right from the sheep. Um, I get them, I wash them, I dye them. I also uh, dye all of my own um, wool too, okay? Um, and then I use some, this is just some um, synthetic stuff I got from, I think Joanne's and um, this is the stuff I use it's it has a it's very um, textury and I use that as my core for my core spinning and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about about that um, so this is how, oh and then also I spun in some um, like I guess you could say it's ribbon but I make my own ribbon I made it out of some fabric or sheets just strips and then this right here is fun fur I went ahead and also um, did that. I uh, spun in some fun fur. So this is why I call it mixed media uh, knitting. There's some more um, sheep's locks, 100% sheep lock. Isn't that cool? Look how pretty that is. So that's how it turns out all together. So all the techniques I used in here, I'm going to show you guys. And I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to do a uh, really wide open like chain type of stitch. And uh, make a necklace out of this so I can wear it. That would be fabulous. So that or it'll be fringe on something. I'm not sure yet. But I love it. And let's get to it. And I'll show you guys how I did this. Now this one, I'm using some different things to make this art yarn. Let me take off my shoes. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm using to uh, core spin, it's called core spinning, what I'm doing um, this is a textury yarn I get from, um, where do I buy this from? I think I bought it at Joann's. And um, it grabs onto everything, the wool, anything that I want to spin, it grabs onto it really well. So here we go. And I've already gotten started, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing, what I'm spinning. Where did I leave off at? Okay, I left off there so I can start. Okay, um... So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin in, this is flax. It looks like a uh, horse hair. And that's what I want this whole, um, this whole art yarn that I'm spinning right now. I want it to be, um, look like it's, um, a, it's like all horse tails. I think that's what I'll call this, uh, art yarn. I'll call it horse tails. So, but this isn't a horse's tail. It's not human hair. It's flax. So it's the fiber from, uh, the flax plant. Like, you know, flaxseed. It's the fibers. I believe it's the fibers from it of the flaxseed plant. So it's actually a plant. It's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let me get myself situated. Oh, I just started spinning the wrong thing. Just a second. Let me get that off of there. Come back again. All right, sometimes you lose control. All right, let's see. So I like to anchor it like this, get it spinning and just kind of really go like that and then let go of that part and then just use this piece right here. So then that locks this in, okay? So that's locked in. And then to lock this in more because this flax it doesn't catch onto the um, onto the core um, like the wool does. So I took some here's some 100% wool that I have um, 
dyed. I dye with Kool-Aid and cake dye. And that right there, by doing that, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but oh well, it caught it. By this is a little bit thicker than I want it, but we're good. By um, doing that, that locked in this more. So now this is really super locked in. Okay, just a second. There we go. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to spin in here is some of the locks. And these are, um, if you when you do locks, you definitely want to have like long locks like this. I think they're called long luster locks. <clears throat> and I get them on eBay. And I don't buy them just from one um, uh, sheep breeder or sheep herder or whatever you call them. <laughs> I'm not taking up the name. Um, because um, they, you know, they shear their sheep. They're not shearing their sheep all the time. So they're not, they don't always have um, the locks available. So I, I go to different, um, different uh, people on eBay. Okay, and then I go like that to lock in this, so it locks in. So once I do like the flax, then I'll do the, um, I'll do the wool right behind it. Then I'll do um, a lock, a sheep's lock, and I'll do wool right behind it, and it locks it in. Because the wool, um, it locks in really, really nicely um, on this core that I'm using. And the core I'm using is synthetic. Like I said, I get it from um, hot, or God, I can't even think of where I get it from. Uh, Joann's. Cause I go to Joann's and Michael's too. So okay, again, we'll put it on about like that. Leave out that much. This will be my piece that I'm going to um, that I'm going to spin around. Okay. There. Oh didn't catch that time okay and if you do that it something doesn't catch and you're kind of over spinning let it go for just a second so you don't over spin all right Let's see if we can't get this again there we go okay here we go I think no I can't get that to catch for some reason all right I was gonna put this like little ribbon on here, but I just can't get the ribbon to catch. Let's try it. Let's do it. We'll try it again. One more time. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Got it that to catch that time. Okay, now this right here could come off really, really easily because this is not caught on to my core so again so that it catches on really nicely I'm going to take my wool <clears throat> and I buy this um, where do I buy this at there we go and then that locks that in right there so that locks that in really good um, I'm trying to think where I buy this. Crafts, craftsy? Yeah, I think that's where I buy this at. And you buy it in, um, you buy it in packages. Um, and I think I spend like, it depends if it's on sale, between five and eight dollars a pack for it. And so you get a nice amount. You have to go on there and look for it. Um, it, yeah, it's on craftsy. Okay, so next what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just make a little, um, uh, cone. Then I'm going to make a bobble. And then I'm just going to end it right there. So right now, I just have, I have, I have a sheep's lock. I have a ribbon, a little, a brown piece of ribbon. To me, almost like a piece of suede lace. 
I have a, a knot there. I have a bob. Uh, I have a bobble there. I have a cone. Another bobble. I'm gonna let let's go a little bit so that it's not so um so it's not so tight. I, I let it loose just a little bit if I feel like things are getting a little too tight. Okay, so we're gonna go now to some flax again. And like I said, I'm going to call this design that I'm doing right now horsetail. And I'm definitely going to make a necklace out of this. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then let's take some of the... Some of the wool here. And lock that down. Okay, and that locked that in. So now the horse, the flax is locked in. And what are we going to do next? I'll just leave that there because I'm going to need that. Um, We'll do some sheep lock. <clears throat> okay, that's locked down. To lock it down more, I'm going to take some of my wool and lock this down more. And this is not, it's wool, it's 100% wool, but what this really is called, it's called roving. I, I don't know why I couldn't think of what the hell to call this stuff. So this is roving. And like I said, you buy it in packages and um, you get a lot in each package. It's roving. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of that. Okay, so now this is what we have. Okay, this is looking really cool. And this will either be either be a necklace or I'll, I'll try to make enough of it that I can make a necklace and I can also have some for a fringe for a uh, Saatchi cardigan that I'm working on. Okay, and then let's do the um, ribbon, the handmade ribbon, which is just, you know, torn up sheets or fabric. Okay, here we go. And so you can see what I'm doing when I do with my finger to get everything to catch. You need to really work your finger like this. And when you do that, that's what helps it catch, whether it's this or it's this or whether it's the uh, roving. Okay, to tie this down, you need to use some roving to tie it down. Okay. There we go. And I was going to continue and we will do a cone and then just lock that in. Okay. All right, so we have a cone there and then we're going to do a bobble next. I'm going to show you guys another thing too. It'll be fun to do. Hope I'm not working too far back that you guys aren't seeing everything. Okay, so a, um, a bobble is just like a little knot. So there's the knot right there. Okay. <clears throat> and then, then I'm going to do this. Okay. And by doing that, it creates a big, huge bobble or a big cone or bobble, whatever you want to call it, bobble cone, <laughs> whatever, right there. And then I'll just go ahead and lock everything in, just like that. Let me add some more here. Just 
Just a second. Okay, let's go. And that really locks down that little bobble too, right there. So I always like to follow up, every time I do something, I like to follow it up with, um, I'm gonna let go of that a little bit. I like to uh, follow it up with, um, if I make a bobble or I, or I do a sheep's lock, whatever, I like to follow it up with um, some rowing, just to lock things down. So that way you're never going to have to worry about losing anything. Let me just check my time really quick. Okay, good. Well, we've got another 10 minutes. Alexa, set timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes, starting now. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to go a little bit faster now. That means I've explained a lot of things. I'm going to start going a little faster. Not majorly faster, just a little bit. Maybe not talk as much. We'll see. I am a talker, though. What that noise is that's like hitting, it's some of my, um, it's some of my, uh, ribbon. It's hitting the machine down there. No major. Lock this down with some roving. keep clearing my throat earlier I um, was having lunch just a little bit before I came on and something went down the wrong what food went down the air pipe or something I don't know something so my throat's been a little itchy ever since then I had a major cough attack it was horrible okay let's lock that down second guys I need to really make sure this is on the wheel good there we go and what you do is you, you change it you, you, you work each notch here so once you get a lot going here then you bring it down you bring it down you bring it down so it doesn't just all end up in one spot so that's what I'm doing when I do that. Let me. Okay. Uh, where am I at now? Okay, we need some ribbon. And to me, this doesn't look like ribbon. It looks like little pieces of suede. So that's kind of what I'm going for with that is some suede. A suede look. Which I think will go with the flax, which is look. I want it to look like horsetail. Okay. So I think this is going to be gorgeous. I'm going to call it like I said. I'm going to call it horsetail. And you guys, you want to talk about therapy. This is so relaxing to spin. Oh my gosh. Okay, and let's do a coil. And then we'll just go back and forth. There we go. That's sticking out there, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> it's art yard. You can do whatever you want. There's no right or wrong with art yarn. <clears throat> That's why I love it. You can mix all kinds. You can spin anything when you're making art yarn. And um, you can spin anything. You can... Um, there's no right or wrong answers. 
Um, I have listened to some ladies who spin art yarn and they have some rules, but whatever. I don't. Okay, I'm gonna, I want to spin on top of here a little bit more because um, I want that to be a little bit tighter. So we'll continue that real quick. So I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm spinning. I thought I'd just turn my camera on for a good 20 minutes. Let you guys kind of see what I'm working on with the, with the art yarn. I've had quite a few people ask me about it, so I thought, you know what, I need to come on and do it. Okay. There we go. Let that loose a little bit. All right. Now, let's go ahead and take some blacks again. <clears throat> Jeez, my throat is just a mess from earlier when I had that cough attack. Okay. And it always looks like this is like getting caught up, but as you can see, it's not because I let go of this. I only hold on to the one little section and I leave this alone. Let's lock it in with some roving. And all roving is, is, you know, it's 100% wool. It's just the way they, I don't know how they make it, how it's processed into roving. Not really sure how all that's done, but that's what they call it. Um, at Craftsy, um, they sell roving that, um, that has a silk blend in it and I bought that the first time and it was on sale for like six dollars a bag and then um, this last time it wasn't on sale it was eight dollars so then I just bought the one that didn't have the silk in it and I have to say you guys it's worth the extra two bucks if it's not on sale to get the one with the silk it's so soft I love it and I like how it dyes better too so but It's up to you, but I love it. So I, I'm going to finish up this batch I have now, this roving that doesn't have the silk. But when I put my next order in, I definitely will get the one with the silk. Something else, when you order your uh, locks, your sheep locks, you want the long wool sheep locks. They need to be nice and long um, to do this kind of work. And also, um, I get, I, I buy it dirty. And um, I buy it dirty. And... Uh, I clean it and I, I I have this cleaner. I will put the name of this cleaner. You buy it at Costco and it's supposedly an all natural cleaner, but whatever. It cleans the hell out of these sheep's locks because they come really dirty and really greasy. But you can buy it cheaper and you can buy more of it. And there'll still be some lanolin left in after you clean it with this cleaner that I that I'm gonna talk to you guys about. And when it has some um oils left in it a little bit, it takes the dye better. So um I'll have to I will leave that in the information below. What you can clean your um, your sheep's locks or your wool in. You get it at Costco. I know it sounds crazy, but it is awesome. It uh, cuts oil like there's nobody's business. Okay, you guys. Alexa, turn off timer. Okay, you guys. That is it for today. I just thought I'd come on. My camera's about to turn off. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. And give this video a thumbs up. That'd be great. Any comments or questions, leave them below. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. All right. Bye, guys. Oh, and I'll be having another video soon on what knitting I'm working on. And, uh, yeah, and some yarn that I bought and then all that. So that'll be coming up pretty soon. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.